Our first keynote speaker is Jay Vigian, the Chief Information Officer at Tesla Motors. Jay runs all the information systems for Tesla Motors. Jay champions IT as an enabler for Tesla and works with all the company's groups to identify opportunities, structure, develop, and deliver systems and solutions. They didn't tell me I need to speak one more time, so I repeated all my jokes already in my earlier session. But anyway, I'll, I'll give my message, but then I'll keep it short. Um, so I, I did um, do a presentation earlier today, um, it was more about uh, innovation, entrepreneurship, and uh, case study with Tesla. Obviously, I'm associated with Tesla very closely. I know the product, I love the company, I love the innovation. Allow the uh, entrepreneurship that Elon Musk brings to the company. He's literally a role model for all entrepreneurs and uh, innovators. So, uh, I want to talk about, um, let's talk about innovation. Right? Innovation is um, finding new products, solutions, or services. And entrepreneurs um, are agents of um, innovation, and they do um, bring a lot of uh, products, solutions, or services, they even find new requirements um, in the market. Uh, so, I had yours, and then uh, sold it uh, to someone, um, which was, this was in India, and then I um, went abroad for, for, for a job, and the reason I did that is I wanted to learn uh, in the real world in different, different disciplines. That's exactly what, what I'm doing right now. Um, I, I uh, went to the US in 1999, uh, joined Oracle, that was my first job in the United States, and um, had a great experience learning at Oracle. And I was really comfortable at Oracle, well settled, had a big office, everything was going great. Um, one fine day, a recruiter called me on my desk and said, hey, we have a company called as VMware, um, and we think you're the right person for this job to run their um, applications development organization as a director, are you interested? I was like, okay, I'm all settled, should I really even look at it? I said, okay, let me take a look. And I did look up what's VMware, and I said, like, okay, it's a great product, and it's just before the company went IPO, it's the next Google, and I said, like, okay, it sounds very interesting, let me take that step. Obviously, I have to evaluate the risk and all of those things, because I have I had a guaranteed job, I'm doing very really well, Running two products for our infusion application, everything was going great. Do I really need to do it? I said, okay, yes, I need to do it because there's so much potential for this company. So I did take that risk. I over years I was at Oracle for like seven years, so over years I completed the stock options and everything. I said, like, okay, I need to leave a lot on the table, but I see a potential here. So I went, joined VMware. I, I I'm glad I did. It was at the startup phase where I had to, I can make a difference to the company. So they run their ID applications organization. They had a big failed implementation prior to me joining. Um, it was pretty bad. Um, um, they had to really sack the whole ID out. And the, this was the second implementation, which was pretty challenging. And I had no other option other than make it successful. So we did deliver their core um, um, RT yeah, implementation successful. And that gave me more and more opportunity to grow within the company as the company grew from uh, $700 million in revenue to $4.5 billion in revenue and maybe $55, $60 billion in market cap, which was a phenomenal experience for me. And that laid the foundation for me to join Tesla. Again, I didn't search for a job for Tesla. Tesla found me, but again, my initiative was to take that risk. And it's very similar with VMware is um, I was doing well. VMware's stock was doing well. It was to the sky from the time I joined. And I had like literally a few million dollars in stock options and I didn't have to do anything because I was so successful at VMware. It was proven. I didn't have to take that risk. But I did take that risk because I saw the potential in Tesla, what the company is capable of. And as I described in, the, in my um, uh, presentation this morning, it's a polarizing company. Tesla is now things are changing more towards more and more towards positive. But in the past, it used to be either people love this company or I hate this company. There's no in between. I'm a big fan, or oh, this is not going to go anywhere. This company is just going down. 
Um, right? So the thing is, I have to literally take a big risk there to leave a million of dollars. I have to take a pay cut to join Tesla because Tesla was not even profitable. They didn't have bonus, everything. I believe in the company. I took a pay cut and I told Elon that I'll take stock options. Right? I believe in your product. I mean, I'm happy I did. So it's doing well. It's doing really well. I believe in it, honestly. And literally, my cash flow stopped the moment I joined Tesla because I had to take a big cut. And I, it's all worth it. And I believe in the vision what Elon was laying out to me in my interview with him, just a one hour interview. And I still see that the same vision is being executed in the company. So the morning was talking about people taking, breaking that barrier, taking that risk. Many times entrepreneurs and uh, young professionals see a lot of signs and they see their instincts tell them, hey, this is a great thing for me to do. But they always hold back many times um, a lot of things like to play it safe and family pressure and a lot of other things. But uh, what I would ask them to do is, yes, go take that risk. And the bigger the risk you take, the bigger the challenge you take, the bigger the problem you solve, the bigger the reward is going to be. It is absolutely true. I've gone through this during my startup as well as in my professional career. It's very, very true. So, the, the shares and things morning um, probably is superior, but I think it's worth it. Um, there was an interview with a um, entrepreneur who was very successful and someone asked him, okay, what, what is your turning point? You're so successful, what was your turning point? And uh, he said, yeah, the, the biggest turning point for me uh, to become an entrepreneur was um, one single thing that my last boss who I was working for said to me. And the interviewer said, wow, that's amazing. It must be a cool thing. What, what, what was it? He said, you're fired. <laughs> so he said, like, that's, that was the best thing that happened to me. And many people, it's true, because sometimes decisions are made for them if they don't make it, which is a great thing, but my point is, don't wait for the decision, not every time it happens. Um, so take that extra step, come out of the safety net. Um, the more you say, get out of the comfort zone, take a riskier challenge. Again, it shouldn't be a foolish risk. Your instinct will tell you, by the way. If you're just blindly going and doing something that's different, but uh, many times, the, your first in in instinct is, 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 is right. So if you will know if it's the right thing for you. If, if you feel that and if you're just holding back because of uh, some comfort factor and safety thing, just break the barrier and go do it. And that's that's very, very important key thing to keep in mind. Second thing I'll tell for innovators and entrepreneurs is keep your mind open. Even though you, you should strongly believe in your idea, believe in your product, believe in your solution, and keep your mind open for learning. Learn from successful people. Um, learn from successful products. Um, be open to course correct. Um, as I said um, earlier, uh, glass full cannot be filled anymore. So your mind should be an empty glass or a half glass. Sounds philosophical, but it's true. It's, it's like you have to go with the open mind to learn from different people, especially look at successful people. When I was very, very young, I used to think, wow, successful people, life is easy for them. They make a lot of money, they enjoy life, they go to party. Many times when I get that, I feel they, they, every, almost every person, there might be a few people who don't, but there are, every person deserve what they earned it. And they've earned it many times the hard way. We will many times see only the, the interface, the, the, where they got to. How they came through that was not easy. So the, 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 the tougher times you go through and how many times you get up after falling and how well you get up is very important. So don't get demotivated by failures. Learn, learn from your failures and keep going at your goals. So it's very important to have a clear end goal that you're marching towards. You will, you will have to make course corrections, but just walk, walk towards your goal, <coughs> remove barriers. If you fall, just get up and keep walking, keep running, and that's very, very important to be um, successful. And the third um, important point I would want to make is um, surround yourself with smart people. People smarter than you 
don't get intimidated by anyone, your friend, your colleague, your partner, that they're smarter than you. You need smart, smart people hire smarter people. It's true. I've hired, I think, the reason said it resonates so much with me. Every job I was, I've hired people who get paid more than me. It's true. And leaders, good leaders do that because they know that they need the people, they can add value, they can bring value multi-fold in there. But it has to be the right person, not to every person you have to do. But if they are the right people, you can pay more. So the, the, the fundamental point is try to get complimentary. If you're a technology person, um, entrepreneur who's, look, who's looking to a startup, go find a great operations person, great sales person to complement your skills. If you don't. So don't be afraid, don't think that, oh, I, I can do this. I would, yeah, many times you learn, but you have to think, is it worth it? If you're really core strength this technology, just focus. Become the CTO, hire a CEO, or be a CEO, hire a CEO. So these are all important. So those three kind of are really very simple takeaway. Be real. So I'd like to share another, another joke. Um, there is a um, entrepreneur, he raised a lot of money and he had put up, put up a great office, <coughs> prime location, very well decorated, spent millions of dollars. He was sitting in his office and um, there was a person who came in, uh, first, probably the first person entered in his office, uh, he was sitting in the glass door, the person came in, kind of knocked the door and just entered and he immediately, uh, before he came in, this person picked up the phone, he wanted to look busy because the office was empty, just brand new. He picked up the phone and he started talking. He, did, he ignored this person who came in and he started talking like business uh, lingo and a lot of millions of dollars and deals and all this is great. I'm, it's, it's, it's going to be great. So, see, he was literally pretending for like five, ten minutes and the, the person was standing uh, patiently uh, watching this person. And then he said, like, okay, then he kept the phone. He said, like, hey, how can I help you? And, sorry, I was busy. How can I help you? He said, sir, I'm from the telephone company, I came here to activate your phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, be real, don't pretend. I mean, many people think offices are, and all the, 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 the real, I'll say, the um, interface is important, but it's not everything. And I was telling someone, this is true, my position from Oracle to VMware to Tesla grew bigger. My salary, my package grew multifold. My office grew smaller. <laughs> I had a bigger office already because it's a big company and I had a smaller title. VMware, I started with a cube, I got an office, but that's how it is. For Tesla, I sit at a desk. Because Elon Musk sits at a desk, it's an open desk, there's no cubicle, there's no office. If he sits in a desk, I'm okay to sit in a desk, he's a billion, he has $4.5 billion network. It's not just because of the network, the end of the day, interface is not everything. It's your goals, it's your product, it's your service, it's your solution, what you're selling to your customers. So think more about the customer, think less about you. I think Purnima did, I don't know, still her time, but probably she's thinking of talking about that. I did that in my job as well. So think more about the customer. Take the pain on you, make the life easy for the customer, to your product yourself. If you're thinking, oh, my life is going to be easy to do this, it's okay, but the it's customers, let them go through this, it's fine. Not going to sell the product, maybe initially, but the day it's not going to go anywhere. So, I'll leave it there. Um, I'll, I'll be very happy to take any questions. Um, I like being more interactive than one way. Oh, you have time to do questions after? Okay. Right. Okay.